Hi, I'm Susan Athey. I'm the Economics of Technology professor at the Stanford Graduate School of Business. And I do research on economics of the internet, um, big data, and the intersection of machine learning and econometrics. Um, and I've been applying that to advertising markets and the news media. Looking at using machine learning techniques to evaluate policies um, in social science applications as well as medicine. And so I was developing techniques that help you answer the question, for whom is a certain treatment or policy uh, a good idea and for whom is it a bad idea? So a simple example would be giving a drug. Um, generally, we do uh, experiments to try to understand whether the drug is effective, and you would generally look at whether it was effect effective on average or maybe for a few subsets of population. Um, so I was trying to develop techniques that allow you to take a large-scale uh, experimental trial and identify what subsets of the population have particularly strong or weak treatment effects. Um, and there's a bunch of problems with trying to do that if you do it naively, because if you look out at the data, there's going to be a few people who had really good outcomes or really bad outcomes. And if you have a lot of characteristics of the people, you can basically figure out what all those people have in common. So I can say, oh, here were three people with really great outcomes, and they were between 62 and 65, and they lived in this state, and they had this level of blood pressure and these other characteristics. So you need to be very careful when you do this type of analysis to do it honestly. Um, that is to make sure that you're not overfitting the data or finding spurious correlations. And so I put a lot of emphasis on finding honest methods that allow the researcher to fully explore the data while still giving unbiased and valid results about um, what's actually statistically significant. Um, and that's something that, that's, that's novel. things that's nice about having a lot of data is that you make, don't have to make quite as many assumptions about the, the individuals you're analyzing. So if you only have 100 observations, there's only so much heterogeneity you can allow for, even though those 100 individuals may all be very different from one another in their behavior, their objectives, and their characteristics. And so um, when you have lots of data, you're able to let the data speak and say, well, these people, they seem to, to act like this, and these other people, they seem to act like that, and I have enough data to identify that and separate them out. So for example, I've been studying the behavior of advertisers in search advertising auctions, and there are you know, hundreds of thousands of advertisers, and even within the advertisers, they have different campaigns with different objectives. And I'm, I have enough data that I can, act, instead of assuming that they all do the same thing and roughly kind of maximize profits in the same way, um, I can actually separate out what their objectives are from their behavior. So I can see someone respond to changes in the system. And if they're always trying to get back to the top of the screen, I can say, well, this is an advertiser that really values prominence and being seen in the top position by a user. And then if I understand that about the advertiser, I can predict their behavior. While this other advertiser seems to be maximizing profits from clicks. And then if I make a change, I can predict their behavioral response um, based on what I've learned about them in the past. And so economists have often developed models that assume profit maximization with a single objective for everybody, and we just didn't have the data to do anything else. And now we can be much richer in our descriptions of data. Um, another type of thing that's very interesting to me is understanding how people find information and news and other things online and what the role is of aggregators and intermediaries. And again, with lots of data about lots of people making choices, I can start to uncover you know, what's the role of an aggregator like Google News, what's the role of a search engine what, versus the role of the New York Times or Facebook in terms of curating the news that people read and ultimately how informed they are about news events.